Okay, so we're going to talk about electron configuration today and its relationship to the periodic table. Now you may remember in the last video we talked about orbital energy diagrams. And this is an orbital energy diagram. Now an orbital energy diagram ranks the relative energies of the individual orbitals and sublevels uh, within the atom. And the electrons fill those orbital energy those orbitals from lowest energy to highest energy two electrons per orbital. So when you get the boron, boron has five electrons. You can see two electrons go into the 1s orbital, two electrons go into the 2s orbital, and then finally the last electron goes into the 2p orbital. And what this does is this gives us an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. And we say that's the electron configuration for that individual element. Now when you start to look at the periodic table and you start to put the electrons into the individual orbitals, you'll notice a very interesting pattern starts to develop. So let's go ahead and start to do this. Now hydrogen has one electron, it goes into the 1s orbital, so it's 1s1. Helium has two, so both go into 1s orbital, it's 1s2. Lithium has three. The last term would be 2s1, 1s2, 2s1. Um, beryllium, 1s2, 2s2. And then we move over to boron, which we already did, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. And we can continue that along, and you can see it goes from 2p1 all the way to 2p6. Then we come back over to sodium, 3s1. And then next to sodium is magnesium, 3s2. And then we skip over, we get 3p1 to 3p6. You can see that the periodic tables, we can fill this in, has different sections to it. The, there's the S section where the first columns all end in S1. The, the, um, the second column, which is column 2, all end in S2. And then we have the P section, or the P block of the periodic table, where those six groups of elements all have a last term of the electron configuration that ends in P1 through P6, depending on where they are in the section. Then you have your D block, which is the middle section, the transition metals. So what you'll notice about the D block is that it's that middle section, the transition metals, as I just said, but it also starts in the fourth row of the periodic table. Now this is because each row of the periodic table represents an energy level within the atom. The first row is the first energy level. Now the first energy level only has the S block. That's why there's only two elements on the first row, 1S1 and 1S2. In the second row you have the S and the P section. So you have the 2s1, 2s2, and then 2p1 through 2p6. In the third energy level, you have the s, the p, and the d. But the thing is, is if you think back to the orbital energy diagram, energy level 4 occupies, the 4s sublevel uh, is occupied before the 3d sublevel. So what we see with the periodic table is that in the third row of the periodic table, you have 3s1, 3s2, skips over the D section to 3P1, 3P6, and then comes back, fills in the 4S, 4S1, 4S2, and then you hit the 3D. The 3D is that first row of the transition metals, and that goes D1 through D10, as you can see here. Once we get through the 3D section, we're back into the P section, 4P1 through 4P6, and then the 5S, and then the 4D, and then the 5P, and then the 6S again. So what's going on is there's just this pattern within the periodic table. Now, after 6S2 comes 4F1. Now if you think back to the orbital energy diagram, the F block actually starts to get filled in energy level 4, but it does not get filled until after you've occupied the 6th energy level. So what happens is, is that first block there, which is the lanthanides, uh, section of the periodic table or lanthium is actually 4F1 and then you can see where 4F2 through 14 would go. And again, we're talking about just the last term of the electron configuration. Then 5D1. That whole bottom section there, those 14 elements on the very bottom are actually squeezed into the little gap between where you see 4F1 and 5D2 and where between 5F1 and uh, what's going to be 6D2. That's where that whole little section is actually um, 
squeezed into but it's easier to see on paper or they the, when they design the periodic table they move that section out to make it fit better onto paper but this is how the basic pattern in the periodic table and what this does is this allows you to predict the or figure out the last term of any element on the periodic table so let's take lead for example lead is located where I drew this arrow it has 82 electrons. The last term is going to be 6p2 because it's in the sixth row in the p2 column. It's almost like playing Battleship you know, that you might have played when you were a kid. Now, to fill out the ele complete electron configuration for an element like lead, what you have to do is you have to write the last term of every occupied sublevel. So 1s is occupied, so we write 1s2. 2s is occupied, we write 2s2. 2p is occupied, we write 2p6. 3s is occupied, so we write 3s2. And we're going to do this all the way until we get to 6p2. Now, this can be a little bit tedious, but you're, all we're doing is we're reading across the periodic table, left to right, and we're writing out, every, as soon as we fill up a level, a sublevel, or a section of the periodic table, we write the last term of that section. Okay, so after 5p6 comes 6s2. And then after 6s2 comes 4f14. And then finally, we're at 5d10. And then after that, 6p2. So therefore, the complete electron configuration of lead is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10. 5p6, 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, 6p2. Now, obviously that's a lot of terms to write out. So what we're going what I'm now going to teach you is the noble gas shortcut. The, what we're going to do is we're going to use the noble gases. Noble gases so the electron configurations don't change. They're, they they are inert gases. They do not interact with other atoms, so they do not exchange electrons. So they have a constant electron configuration. The noble gases are the last column of the periodic table. And then what we're going to do is we are going to find the noble gas that occurs directly before our target element. In this case, that noble gas is xenon, which has an electron configuration of 5p6. So what we are going to do is we're going to eliminate everything through 5p6 in the electron configuration. We're going to start with the element symbol xenon, and then we're going to write all the terms that happen after xenon's already filled. So xenon, 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, uh, 6p2. I apologize that you read 6p2. And then you ha therefore you have the electron configuration of lead with the noble gas shortcut. Either way is acceptable. But obviously the noble gas shortcut saves you a little bit of time in writing out the terms for the electron configuration. Just remember you're supposed to read 6p2 um, at the very end of that. And that is how you use the periodic table to determine electron configuration.